Malcolm Turnbull, his new book, A Bigger Picture, which the ABC is helping him now to promote like crazy. Now, I am absolutely stunned, having now seen more of the book, how embarrassing it is. Embarrassing for Turnbull. This reads like it was written by some complete narcissist, someone who thinks he is fantastic and blames all his failures on someone else. One classic sign of narcissism, look it up. Narcissists condemn in other people the exact sins they overlook in themselves. Like Turnbull. He whinges that the Liberals knifed him as Prime Minister two years ago. Oh, the betrayal. Just like he, in fact, knifed Tony Abbott before that. Boo-hoo, Malcolm. Isn't karma a bitch? Then on he goes. Whinging today that Scott Morrison betrayed him to become Prime Minister himself, just like Morrison had two years earlier betrayed Abbott to make Turnbull Prime Minister. But that was OK because Turnbull was going to be Prime Minister. Morrison using the same trick against Abbott. Good against Turnbull. Evil. The trick, publicly supporting Turnbull while getting his mates to vote against him. The bottom line is, Scott, you know, when Abbott was uh, defeated, Scott was saying publicly he was supporting Abbott, but he was working to get the numbers to vote for me. So, he, you know, he has... That's his MO. Karma, 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 come and get Malcolm, please. Turnbull even moans in his book that he couldn't trust people, couldn't trust them to keep his conversations with him private. Yet in this book, Turnbull does exactly the same thing and worse and more often blabbing about private conversations with Morrison, with Donald Trump, with my boss Rupert Murdoch, with so many colleagues, even, even with the then Governor-General Peter Cosgrove. But then again, really, how much can you actually trust what Turnbull says? He accuses Finance Minister Matthias Corman of saying things privately about Morrison, nasty things, when the evidence I have suggested with Turnbull himself who actually said it. But in this book, then puts his words in Corman's mouth. And this bull artist was your Prime Minister. Behold this whinging, dissembling, blame-shifting whiner. I said the ABC is helping to promote Turnbull's book, but of course, he's a man of the left. This book is smashing the Liberals. Of course, they'd help him. And so, no fewer than three ABC staff are personally helping Turnbull to launch his book, including Annabel Crabb, as well as the very left-wing Raphael Epstein. And today, the ABC has given a whole hour of prime time to an interview with Turnbull, so that he can unload on everyone he blames for his downfall, including us here at Sky and the rest of the Murdoch News media. And that is the line, of course, that the ABC is running hard with in its promotions. Why do you think they didn't want you to win an election? Abbott and their friends in the Murdoch media overthrew my government because they thought I would win it. Those plutocrats knew that I did not belong to them. What? A joke. Hands up anyone who thought Turnbull would win the last election. Turnbull got dumped by his own party because they thought he could not win. They thought he was a dud. They thought he'd dragged the party too far to the left and made it dysfunctional and unelectable. Five by-elections he lost in the months before. Five, including Longman. So they dumped him. His colleagues dumped him. I didn't. Peter Credlin didn't. Rupert Murdoch didn't. There was one man who tried years ago, years ago, to warn the Liberals about Malcolm Turnbull. Peter King. Former mayor, Willara, Rhodes Scholar, barrister. He was then the Liberal MP in the Sydney seat of Wentworth until Malcolm Turnbull called in... Some favours from a lot of mates and took that seat from Peter King 17 years ago to get into Parliament. And Peter King joins me now. Peter, thank you so much for your time. How did Malcolm Turnbull take your seat from you? Well, it was... Uh, <clears throat> I think Tony Abbott described it as the mother of all branch stacks. 
and that's probably a correct description. Uh, and um, it was done furtively. Uh, it was done um, uh, in a, uh, a campaign of dirty tricks. Uh, let's, let's just leave it at that. And, of course, uh, the State Director of the New South Wales Liberal Party helping him was Scott Morrison. Now, when you hear Malcolm Turnbull uh, then uh, complain and whine and whinge in this book and on ABC TV about how he was betrayed, how he was knifed, how you can't trust anyone to be loyal, you must have a sick little laugh. Well, my concern with uh, this book is it's not so much a personal diary, but... Uh... Uh, a trashing of our Westminster system by someone who really should have known better. And it does know better. It's a deeply hurt, deeply felt rejection of our constitutional system of government. And it's a sad and sorry tale, I have to say. Uh, a very good example of what I'm trying to say is uh, in, at the heart of the book in Chapter 20, where um, the author runs through several Cabinet meetings which, as you know, under our system is supposed to be confidential uh, and properly uh, debated so that uh, you get frank opinions from the public service and a free, an exchange, uh, free exchange of ideas around the table from Cabinet members. These uh, meetings are simply disclosed in the book in a way which I think is um, really reprehensible. Um, for example, and relevant to today's circumstances, in August 2014, there was a proposal from ASIO that the, um, that the government collect IP addresses from uh, uh, Australians through uh, the internet. And uh, that, of course, affected the author's uh, portfolio at the time. Uh, and we get a blow-by-blow -blow description of the Cabinet meetings and deep criticisms of our then Prime Minister Tony Abbott Peter Credlin, his Chief of Staff, and uh, George Brandis, who'd raised the matter in detailed proposed legislation to the Cabinet, uh, all coming out in this book. Now, that's a trashing of the principle of Cabinet solidarity, and um, uh, I think it uh, undermines our Westminster system in a way which is not acceptable. There's other undermines it, it uh, undermines it because, uh, of course, uh, you want people to speak frankly in these meetings for the benefit of the country. And if they think someone in there is taking notes, as someone clearly was, uh, only to blab it out to the whole world later, that might inhibit some people. Um, also, um, Peter King, you when Absolutely. you. Sorry. When you were, uh, when you were uh, fighting Malcolm Turnbull for your seat, a fight that you nearly won, 600 votes in it at the end, because you stood uh, for, uh, uh, for election as an independent, nearly took the seat off Malcolm Turnbull. Um, you warned the party that Malcolm Turnbull was too far to the left for the Liberal Party. Why weren't you listened to? Because that turns out to be exactly why he lost his job this time around. Well, I think all of us have to stand up for what we believe in and our values from time to time. I thought that uh, Malcolm was an imposter. Um, I believe events in due course have proved that. But um, I did what I could to stop and defend the party that I loved and uh, am still, still a member of uh, because I thought uh, that was consistent with Liberal values and in the interests of the Australian people. Now, when you stood as an independent, you got thrown out of the Liberal Party. Um, there are now calls to get Malcolm Turnbull dumped from the Liberal Party, uh, suspended for... Some people want him gone forever. What's your view? Should he be? Well, uh, that's a matter for others. Um, I noticed that a uh, former member of his staff, uh, Mr Common Soley, who's the uh, president of the Parramatta FEC, has proposed such a resolution, and there is a groundswell of support across uh, left and right part uh, of the party, I'm told, at the moment. But um, I think the, the more critical question is, what is the future for the Liberal Party? Uh, and how do we attract young people who are going to believe in a future, not just for of the two-party system, which has given us such wonderful stability over so long in this great country of ours, but also for those traditions which are at the heart of the Westminster system, which have also given us that uh, strong system of government that we enjoy to this day. 
Well, I'm afraid you are absolutely correct, and I'm going to raise those, uh, some of those questions indeed with my next guest, but Peter King, thank you so much indeed for your time. You tried to warn the party, they didn't listen, and now they're going to suffer. Thank you so much for your time.